How you doing guys? So today I've been asked to deliver a talk at a men's conference and the men's conference is predominantly about health and well-being. I've been asked to speak today on our spiritual health and well-being. The conference is predominantly about prostate cancer and raising awareness on prostate cancer. It's something that has affected me in the respects that a lot of my family members have been sick with prostate cancer. Um, a few of my family members have died, three or four, um, in quite recent time as well from prostate cancer. I know that prostate cancer is something that is very popular, specifically in African Caribbean men. And I recognize it's something that we don't often talk about. So I think events like this, a conference like this, where men get together and actually address these issues is very important. They've got a prostate cancer survivor who will also be delivering a talk. So, it's a good event. Um, one that I'm proud to be associated with, so that's where we're going today. See me in my space car. <laughs> Good afternoon, men. Good afternoon. Good. It's a pleasure to be here. As Ned said, my name is Daniel Douglas. I'm married. I've got four children. Um, I work for London City Mission. I'm also an elder at Calvary Chapel, East Dulwich. Um, right. Over the past year and a half, we've been working with Lordship Lane Baptist Church. I've spoken here numerous occasions, and I'm very fond of the church community that meet here. Today, we're going to be looking at health and well-being, as we have been, with a focus on prostate cancer, something that is very important, but not spoken about enough. I'm sure we've all been affected by this in one way or another. It's something that is very common in African and Caribbean men. I myself have lost three uncles to prostate cancer. So I've been asked today to talk about our spiritual well-being. The human body is an amazing creation. The Bible says that we are God's masterpiece, God's workmanship. In Greek the word is his poema, which is where we get our English word poem. We are God's poem. The human body is incredibly resilient and yet it is incredibly fragile. We can be fit and healthy today, and then out of nowhere, we can start to fall apart tomorrow. Now the Bible also tells us that we are made in God's image. God exists as Father, Son, and Spirit. And we are body, soul, and spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Your spirit is your existence, it's what leaves your body when you die, along with your soul. The soul I believe to be our mind, our will and our emotions. Now these things are eternal and they don't die, whereas flesh and blood is only for a season and it does that. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 15, now, I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. 
The bodies we have now, one day, will see corruption. They will perish. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 tells us, In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Having healed numerous people in this time on earth, the Lord Jesus is widely known as the great physician. Famously saying in Mark's Gospel, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now we're all born into sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So by Jesus' reasoning, we all suffer with the sickness of sin. Of that, only he has the cure for. Jesus said he came that one should have life and have life more abundantly, a full life in Christ Jesus. The church is called the body of Christ and it is like a spiritual hospital, a place where people who recognize that they're sick, sick with sin, gather as God's people for spiritual healing, for restoration, for their spiritual <coughs> well-being. So we need to have a physical balanced diet, but we need to have a balanced spiritual diet too. John chapter 6 verse 35, Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We need the word of God to live, to energize us, to preserve us. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. It says in Psalms 121 verse 7. But 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8 says, For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. So in the big scheme of things, physical exercise is important, but the Bible says it profits little. What we really need is spiritual exercise. And that consists of prayer, fasting, worshipping God, coming together in fellowship as believers, attending church regularly, encourage, encouraging each other in our most holy faith, building each other up. That is spiritual exercise. Any man who don't know Christ Jesus, I want to tell you that today is the day of salvation. Amen. Christ is at the door knocking. Will you receive him? Will you repent and trust in Jesus Christ for eternal life? All you've got to do is come. Come and be regenerated, made alive in Christ by the power of God and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then you don't have to fear death. Because we, as Christians, we have the promise, a promise from the one who conquered death, who conquered the grave. Death couldn't hold him down. He is the risen king. Mm. Amen. My last verse for you today is again from the book of Romans. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So gentlemen, today I implore you, I beg you, take your spiritual health as serious as you intend to take your physical health. Because at the end of the day, nothing's more important than that. <laughs>
We're going to talk about prostate cancer. And to me, prostate cancer, I would say, it changed my life. Where do I begin? I was generally very fit, as we heard about fitness today. I wasn't too spiritual, as we heard about spiritual today. I used to practice, well, teach martial arts for 20 odd years. I was a Wing Chun instructor. Kept it going. Also got involved in the music industry. So I became a music manager, artist manager. Touring the world, having fun, living my life, thinking this was it. Fantastic. Ate well. I did everything well. As far as I was concerned. In 2018, <coughs> I recall a friend of mine just disappeared from the gym. Well, we used to train together. He was my sparring partner. He's one that used to like, you know, kicking up and you know, <laughs> getting ready. Getting ready. <coughs> he was as tall as Goliath here. So <laughs> <laughs> That's all this stuff that's going through my head. Anyhow, I said, look, we're going to give you two weeks to make your decision as to what type of treatment you want. I decided myself, okay, yeah, they gave me radiotherapy treatment, they offered me robotic surgery, um, what is that one? Active surveillance, which I think is a waste of time, and others. I just thought, I weren't listening, to be honest. All I was hearing, I've got cancer. I'm going to die. Yeah, my life is over. I went home. I've got children. I didn't say a word to my family. Didn't say anything to my kids. Nothing at all. I just kept it quiet. It took me literally three days to make my mind up as to what I was going to do. I heard all the rumors. Oh, if you get your prostate removed, you're not going to have an erection. Your sex life is over. You'll be watching yourself for the rest of your life. I thought about it. And I thought, I don't want anything in me that says cancer. So I went back and I said to the doctor, yeah, I'm ready for my option. I want to have it removed. And passed too. My intestine just wasn't happening. So I thought that everything they gave me, you know, wasn't working. Suppository and all this kind of stuff, and laxative, wasn't working. So I just thought, I like mangoes. Hmm. So I told a friend of mine, bring me the two ripest mangoes that you can find. So ripe that I could smell it before he reached my bed. He came in with the mangoes, I ate those mangoes, and this man go. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to release my bowels, and thank God I was then able to go home. When I got home, I was wearing capital, obviously, very weak, didn't know much, I couldn't do much. Yeah? So, I literally lied to them. I told them that you know, I had people at home to look after me. <coughs> Otherwise, they weren't going to let me go. So I got home, and I started just looking around and thought, is this what I've become? Yeah, I felt robbed. I felt like my life was just being taken away from me by cancer. <clears throat> yeah, just leaving the conference. And it was powerful, man. It was a powerful conference. Learned so much. So many people talking and inspiring and the information. It's really a powerful, powerful day. Wasn't even expected to be impacted. So much. And I mean, yeah. You get invited to, to go somewhere. And um, yeah, I literally feel 
impacted. Yeah, man. I feel, I feel a bit overwhelmed, to be honest. You know, the information and, <laughs> yeah, I just feel a bit overwhelmed, fam. And, um, you know, I'm actually gonna go and get tested um, for prostate cancer on Monday God willing you know and that sounds even hearing myself say that out loud it sounds weird but um, at the end of the day um, it's about ruling it out innit You know, I'm of a certain age, I'm of a certain ethnicity, you know, there's people in my family who have had it, who even have it right now. Um, you know, and just hearing people talking, it's like, you know what I mean? Not getting tested is stupid the wise thing to do is to get tested isn't it so um, I'm gonna go and get tested on Monday it's Saturday today I'm gonna go and get tested on Monday um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna make the appointment to get tested on Monday whether I'll get the get the test on Monday is another thing because you know the doctors and stuff but yeah that's what I'm gonna do 